As far as we can discern, the sole purpose of human existence is to kindle a light of meaning in the darkness of mere being. Human interest is in having an established order of things religious, the more complicated and grand the better, since in this there is all the more security and a distance from decisions, something we humans prize so highly. God's interest is that there be no established religious order at all, for the more immediately all are responsible to God, the better hold God has on the ears of everything. All religions are true, but none are literal. The words that people tend to use these days is either spiritual or spiritually independent or spiritual but not religious. And many young people feel very attracted to that. For me, spir spiritual just really points to being in touch with our roots, the deep stuff in our hearts. And so the practices are there to help us touch those places within ourselves. And also to connect with something that holds it all, which for me, as a Christian, is God. But in terms of religion versus non-religious spirituality, I think the difficulty is that I'm seeing in people who are kind of following a post-religious or interspiritual path, I wrote a book encouraging people to do that. As I'm also very much aware of my responsibility. That conversation has been going for a very long time, but when I look at people who try to practice outside of the tradition versus people who enter the tradition, it seems to me oftentimes that people who enter the tradition tend to make more progress. And the reason for that is not necessarily because the churches or whoever else, have all the keys. I mean, the church is pretty messed up. A lot of our institutional traditions are, I dare to say, spiritually bankrupt. But there are still treasures there as well. And I think that one of the treasures is the, the maps and the practices. And I think that in these kinds of post-religious circles, people oftentimes pick and choose things from different traditions. And what that means is that sometimes they can't really go beyond just exploring basic questions. And I think within the religious traditions, you see that people kind of just accept a map and then start with a practice. And I think that that generates progress, whether it's a Buddhist tradition or a Christian tradition or a Sufi tradition. And that's why I think it's very important for those groups to be in deep conversation because those maps can also be passed on to the post-religious world. You know, Bonhoeff would be uh, one person who possibly would encourage something like that. I don't have any illusions about the church or the religious traditions, but I think that they still have some treasures worth connecting with, especially around practice and around a framework for what a mature spiritual life looks like and what are the stages of spiritual life. Uh, in some of my work with young people, you know, I see that people adopt a practice and they go through this kind of very romantic stage where they feel in love with the divine and it's just a lot of joy and they love, you know, getting up at 4 a.m. and practicing and, and then something happens after a couple of years and they hit a dry period. And that's when they often feel that they need to change a teacher or change a tradition or change the practice. And then they start kind of shopping around and sometimes get lost. Uh, may I call a time out here? I thought we were going to take the ultimate journey. This sounded like a great adventure to me. But now we are talking about religion. I'm not so interested in getting involved with religion. I am experiencing a feeling of bait and switch here. What's up? 
How do you think we human beings have always explored reality at the deepest level? This poetic vessel we call religion has always been the vehicle for exploring the ultimate journey. Well, I just know talking about religion makes me uncomfortable. I don't understand it, and I'm suspicious of hocus-pocus and mumbo-jumbo. I'm a reality sort of guy. Hang with me a little longer, and some friends will help us wade into this deep water of the really real. Seeking God is the universal human quest. It is common to all cultures. It is the fundamental human project. It is the common denominator of all the human enterprises. It is common to all human beings, necessary to all human endeavor, central to all human effort, and ultimate to all human activity. What is more, it is the only reason that makes any sense whatsoever out of religious life. Religious life is not just another way of life. It is a way of life intentionally organized to pursue the human quest for God. There's so much bad religion out there that is really not intending to help us with our profound humanness, but is intending to help us with uh, escaping from our profound humanness into some kind of uh, comforting foolishness. Uh, and uh, that kind of religion is a perversion. But it doesn't mean because there's so many perversions of religion out there that religion is not an important part of human life. I mean, you, you wouldn't give up economics just because you got poor economics, would you? I mean, you know, we, we've got to have economics. We've got to access resources and produce them into something useful and distribute the useful things of services and goods. Uh, that's an essential part of society. Well, religion is just like that. It's an essential part of society. So it's important to have good religion that helps you access your profound humanness rather than the bad religion we have that helps you escape your profound humanness. Uh, so reforming religion or making a new religion that uh, does the job uh, of helping people be more accident prone to their humanness is a very important thing. And so it's, it's worth your life, if you want it to be worth your life, to give your time to practicing, not only for yourself, but building practices that work for other people and reforming uh, the obsolete practices that uh, characterize our planet. Uh, so if any of you want a religious vocation, there's, it's just as honorable uh, as uh, becoming a lawyer uh, or a physician or a nurse or a teacher or anything else. Uh, Marx wanted to make economics the, the foundational thing but for me, believe it or not, religion is the foundational thing. It's at the bottom of it all. It gives meaning to the whole cultural realm, and the whole cultural realm gives meaning to the economic realm and the political realm. And so the revolution in religion is primary to making society change, because everything that happens in religion affects every other process in society uh, one way or the other. Very bad religion helps fills her up into a very bad society. And very good religion opens up all kinds of possibilities for a very good society. A lot of what people call spirituality is a rather self-constructed sentimentality or is a, or is a new age uh, fabrication of self-love and things like this. So I'm a little leery of the word spirituality because it's not grounded very well for many people in daily solitary practice. Practice uh, is the key to religion and spirituality, both. Uh, if it's a genuine spirituality, it's helping you access your profound humanness. Uh, now, understandable, a lot of people have avoided the word religion because the religions that they have experienced, both sick Buddhism and sick Christianity and sick Judaism and sick Islam, uh, they don't want to hear the word religion ever again. <laughs> so they want to use the word spirituality for good religion. 
which is valid. So they're, but we have to ask them what they mean. And if spirituality means for you, you want a good religion instead of these sick ones, uh, but you're actually dealing with the same issues. Do you create a spirituality based on Christian heritage, Buddhist heritage, no heritage at all, but some new heritage? You're creating religion or spirituality that serves you and your, your, your colleagues and friends. Maybe the generations and generations of human beings who have gone before and have been attentive to the deepest reality of life still have something to communicate in this present moment as we shape a new and contemporary world. I am open to this possibility. Join me in an encounter with the Library of the Deep Place. <laughs>